adapting any piece of fiction for screen, not every character is going to make the transition for a multitude of reasons. This was the case for Game of Thrones, and it is also the case for House of the Dragon. Now thus far with House of the Dragon, we have learnt that many of the characters missing from Season 1 will in fact be in Season 2, but there is one we know is not likely to appear, and for many who read Fire and Blood, he was a fan favourite. I am of course talking about Queen Rhaenyra's lecherous The Wharf Fall, known as Mushroom, whose account of the events that transpired during the Dance of the Dragons and its build-up makes up one of the three main sources of information during that era. The accounts would be used to piece together an historical account of the war. All differ and disagree to varying extents, but the running theme when it comes to Mushroom's testimony of the events is it tends to be much more scandalous, thus many fans tend to gravitate to his versions of events. So before we can figure out why the full Mushroom was cut from the show, it's important we understand who Mushroom is, and the difficulty he provides when adapting from book to screen. Mushroom was a dwarf, born in or just before 103 AC. He served as a fool at the court of King Viserys I Targaryen, Aegon II Targaryen, Rhaenyra Targaryen, and Aegon III Targaryen. He was three feet tall with a very large, misshapen head. He also claimed to have a large member to match the size of his head. Mushroom was believed by many to be a feeble-minded lackwit, mostly by the nobility at court and as such, they did not attempt to hide their secrets from him. But the truth of the matter was he was sharp-minded and said it to be witty. Mushroom's testimony, which was used to inform Grand Maester Munkin's true telling, is filled with tales of plots, murders, trysts, debaucheries, and many other scandalous claims. The Fool's account is also frequently cited by Archmaester Gildane in his Targaryen history, in which it is often compared to the accounts of the other historians. Many of the wild claims of Mushroom, who according to Gildane loved Rhaenyra greatly, are disputed by the accounts of the other scholars and supporters of Aegon II. Thus it is left to the reader to determine what sources they believe, which in my view is the beauty of fire and blood. Mushroom served as a court fool during the reign of King Viserys Targaryen, and he often spoke of what transpired at his court in the testimony of Mushroom. His account often conflicts with the records of others. For example, one of the most scandalous claims of Mushroom is that Prince Daemon Targaryen took the maidenhead of Lady Alicent Hightower, which he claimed was the cause of her father Otto's dislike of Daemon, and that he himself assisted Daemon in teaching Rhaenyra Targaryen how best to touch a man to bring him pleasure. He then later played a part in revealing their activities to King Viserys I, claiming to have found Rhaenyra in bed together with Sir Harwin Strong in 113 AC. Soon after, Mushroom travelled with Rhaenyra and her court to Dragonstone. For me, this stands out, as why would Rhaenyra keep the fool in her service when he supposedly disclosed her secrets to Viserys? After King Viserys lost two fingers due to sepsis in 126 AC, he held court only from his solar and later his bedchamber, surrounded by maesters, septons and, of course, Mushroom, who claimed he was the only man who could make the king laugh. By the time of Viserys' death, on the third day of the third moon of 129 AC, Mushroom was once again on Dragonstone, in Rhaenyra's service, and thus there for the outbreak of the Dance of the Dragons. When Rhaenyra gave birth to the stillborn Visenya, Mushroom claims that he carried the babe himself to the yard for her cremation. He later supposedly witnessed the duel between the twins Sir Eric and Sir Eric Cargill of the Kingsguard in the castle, and that he aided Lord Corlys Velaryon and Princess Rhaenys Targaryen in preventing Joffrey Velaryon from mounting his dragon to avenge his dead brother Lucerys. During the actual civil war, Mushroom was supposedly present during the war councils held by the Blacks. Following the death of Princess Rhaenys in the Battle of Rook's Rest in the late 129, Mushroom claims he was the only person who could then make Rhaenyra happy. According to his testimony, the sowing of the dragon seeds was in fact his notion, although Grand Maester Munkin credits the idea to Prince Gisaris. Mushroom speaks in detail about his attempt to mount a dragon himself, Silverwing, 
ending with Mushroom's pantaloons on fire, which he then put out by leaping into a nearby well, which almost caused him to drown. By 130 AC, after King's Landing had fallen to Rhaenyra's forces, Mushroom accompanied Prince Aegon the Younger and Rhaenyra's ladies to the capital. There he remained by Rhaenyra's side. It's claimed he watched the storming of the dragon pit from the roof of Maegor's Holdfast, together with Rhaenyra and two of her sons, and members of her court. When Rhaenyra insisted that the small folk would not be able to kill the dragons housed within the dragon pit, it was supposedly Mushroom who was skeptical of her claim. Rhaenyra instructed Mushroom then to hold his tongue or to lose it, so when the fool saw Prince Joffrey Valarian sulk off, he kept silent, according to his testimony. Joffrey then subsequently died with Rhaenyra's dragon, Syrax, in an attempt to save his own dragon, Tyrax. Mushroom remained to attend Rhaenyra following the deaths of Joffrey and Syrax, while Rhaenyra's counsellors conferred. When she fled the capital the next day, Mushroom chose to remain at the Red Keep, which was soon given over to Sir Perkin the Flea. When Rhaenyra ended up dying on Dragonstone, Mushroom remained at the Red Keep after the forces of King Aegon II, Targaryen, took the castle back and then began serving Aegon II as one of his fools. Mushroom claims that Aegon II was incapable of sexual congress due to his severe injuries, though he often watched as one of his male favourites slept with a woman from his court and had Mushroom himself thrice perform the service. On the day of Aegon's death, According to his own account, Mushroom witnessed the murder of Amit, the king's food taster, and claimed he was forced to hide for the night in a barrel of flour to prevent him from being killed himself. For the purpose of this video and this discussion, we don't need to delve into the role Mushroom plays post-Dance of the Dragons and into the Regency, but that does lead me back to the question of this video. Why was Mushroom cut from House of the Dragon when the other chroniclers mentioned in Fire and Blood did make it into the show, especially when House of the Dragon seems to be mixing the accounts of these sources together, somewhat including some of Mushroom's scandalous claims to some degree. One of the commonly cited theories is that in practice, Mushroom was too similar to Tyrion Lannister that there was a fear that when the casual audience saw an alcoholic, sexually promiscuous dwarf, they would just think it was a copy of Tyrion Lannister. There might be some merit to this, but I think there is more to it than that. As House of the Dragon is taking elements from all the accounts, it's almost as if they are creating their own fourth version of events that can stand independently of the others, given the changes made to the show's canon versus the books. Characters' ages and Lane or not dying, for example, but they use a different perspective in the show. The viewer is being given a more first-person view of events rather than the more distant third-person point of view of Fire and Blood. Thus, the viewer has a lot more of a personal connection to what's happening on screen. This is what allows the writers, in a way, to fill in the blanks and even change how things happen without altering the general outcome of events. Thus, the show is very much its own thing. Okay, so why were the other chroniclers included in the show, but Mushroom was not? The other scholars, being Septons and Maesters, have clearly defined roles in the show. Yes, they are minor, but they have clear functions that contribute to the narrative and the scenes they are in. I don't believe this would have worked as well with Mushroom. His role in court is more in the background, providing entertainment. While you could have him in the background of scenes, you'd have to go out of your way to include him in meaningful ways and take time to specifically build his character and focus on him. If the writers didn't want to really do that, then there would be little point in including him simply for the sake of it. There's also the big issue of tone. How's the dragon? While of course having some light-hearted and funnier moments, the events happening do take a rather serious tone. It would have felt out of place having Mushroom in the background doing his stand-up comedy routine. It just doesn't work for the kind of story the show is trying to tell. I think the issue is many people going into House of the Dragon have built up the role of the sources and narrators due to how important they are in Fire and Blood, without really thinking of how they would function in the story, as told from a more personal, character-focused perspective. I think the minimal roles of the likes of Orwell and Eustace make sense given their functions in the story. The issue with Mushroom is the way he tells of his involvement means he would have to be intently involved with most of the key events and plot points in the show. Thus, unlike the other narrators, it's not so simple to include him. I know many people like to think that the dwarf scene at Rhaenyra and Lainor's wedding was a reference to Mushroom, but as of now, there really isn't much to support that, with no confirmation either way. But it would be a nice surprise, and wouldn't surprise me, as the show progresses, we do get some kind of direct reference to Mushroom in some way.